Hey guys, it's me Poppy Rain here, and today we're going to be reading William Chop's Fable, The Boat Contest, featuring Aesop's Lion and the Mouse, by Sherry Lewis. It was Lamb Chops who discovered the little pond in the park. She and Charlie Horace loved to watch the big kids sail their boats on the water. One day, a sign was posted on the tree. Charlie read it out loud. Model Boat Building Contest. Build the best boat. I bet I could build the best boat, bragged Charlie Horace. Me too. I could too, insisted Lamb Chops. Everyone laughed. They're laughing at you, Charlie, said to Lamb Chops. The contest is for older kids. They're laughing at you too, Charlie, said Lamb Chops. Sherry took them to the harbor to look at the big boats. Some boats were tied to the dock. Larger ones sailed in the deeper water. Why does the big boat have a baby boat on a leash? asked Lamb Chops. So people can row from their big boat to the shore, answered Charlie Horace. When they went to the craft shop, Lamb Chops chose a simple kit that could be made into a little rowboat. Charlie picked a very difficult boat model with lots of parts to be put together. Won't that be too hard to build, asked Lamb Chops? For you, answered Charlie Horace, but not for me. I'm going to win the contest. But Charlie Horace did have a hard time building his boat. So many little pieces, he said. I wonder if I can really I wonder if I really can build a better boat than all the other kids. Don't worry about the other kids, said Cherry. Just enjoy doing the best you can. Lamb Chop's rowboat was easy to put together, and she finished it quickly. Look what I made, she said proudly. Charlie Horse snapped. Your boat's too small, just like you. You can't win. And now, setting her little boat aside, beside his big ship, Lamb Chops felt foolish. Charlie Horace is right, she thought to herself. I'm just too little. The day before the contest, Charlie had still not finished. Now can I help you? offered Lamb Chops. How can you help me? answered Charlie Horace. I'm your friend, Charlie, said Lamb Chops. That's what friends are for. But Charlie Horse just snickered and said, You're too little to really be my friend. Lamb Chops climbed into Sherry's lap. How about a story, asked Sherry, putting aside her newspaper. Lamb Chops, Lamb Chops snuggled closer. I guess that means yes, said Sherry. Okay, here's an Aesop's fable called The Lion and the Mouse. Aesop? asked Lamb Chop. He made up this story, answered Cherry. Aesop says, It happened once upon a time, so the story goes. A sleeping lion felt somebody run across his nose. His eyes popped open and he snarled. Who on earth would dare to wake me from my sleep? He saw a mouse was standing there. The lion growled. Look what you've done, you clumsy little thing. Your tiny feet have run across the nostrils of a king. The muddy lion roared in a terrifying way. He told the frightened mouse, I'm going to eat you up today. The mouse said, Sir... I'd hardly make a satisfying chew for someone who's so wonderfully big and strong as you. I'm sorry I awakened you, but if you set me free, why someday I'll do something nice for you. Just wait and see. Please let me go. You never know just how tomorrow will end. And who can tell us, and who can tell what use a mouse could be? especially to a friend. The lion was so amused that he finally agreed. 
and the mouse ran far away. The minute he was freed, you should have seen that tiny creature scamper out of sight. But do you know, the day of bribe, the mouse proved he was right. For, for thought the lion was big and strong, as strong as you can get. He got himself entangled in the ropes of a of a wow of a hunter's net. He twisted and he turned, and the hunter heard him roar. But the king of beasts could not escape, since the net since that's what nets are for. The lion roared again, and and the distant hunter cheered. Then right beside the helpless beast, a tiny mouse appeared. The lion recognized the mouse, who smiled and said, It's me. Be patient, and before the hunter comes, I will set you free. So one by one, between his teeth, the ropes began to fray, and suddenly, with a snap, they broke, and the lion got away, which only proves the smallest mouse can sometimes save the day. Here's the moral of the story, which is always at the end. Nobody's too small to help when someone needs a friend. The day of the contest arrived. There were lots of children and lots of boats. Charlie Horse set his boat into the water. Oh no, whispered Charlie Horse. That girl but the, built the same model as mine. Why would the judges pick my boat as the best when her? Hers, why would why would the judges pick my boat as the best when hers is no different? Lamb Chop thought for a moment. Then she bent down and began to pull a shoelace from Charlie's sneaker. Finally, all the boats were in the water. The judges walked around and round. Last of all, they stopped and looked at Charlie's boat. There was a moment of silence. Then the judges smiled and said, That's the winner. Such a clever idea. Of all the boats sailing on the pond, only Charlie's has a little rowboat trailing behind it. Everyone applauded when Charlie Horace got the prize. As he shook the judge's hand, Charlie said, Thank you, but I want to share the prize with my good friend Lamb Chop. Lamb Chop says, You may be little, but don't ever think little of yourself. Even the small of us can do big things. The end.